Okay, we're back here live inside theCUBE. This is SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and I'm joined here with Mandy Walls, senior technical evangelist from OpsCode, also known as the DevOps diva coined by, was it Maureen who coined that? Yeah, Maureen Ma coined that one. <laughs> <laughs> She's awesome. Yeah. Um, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, great to be here. Well, the folks that might not know SiliconANGLE and Wikibon, we love DevOps. We've been focusing on DevOps now for four years. Um, before it was DevOps, we just called it IO-centric infrastructure. Um, and OpsCode is doing some great work in there, but you know, the DevOps really came out of, this is a, to me a DevOps show. I mean, Velocity is a DevOps show because DevOps enables what Velocity is doing, which is integrating design from the edge, user experience back into the cloud and or infrastructure. So, and everything in between, performance management, web and mobile. Um, and it has been validated, don't you think? I mean, DevOps has been validated. Oh, absolutely. Like, over the past several years, we've seen much more uptick in not just our core pieces of the marketplace in the web shops and the, the web startups, but also more of an interest in consumer-facing enterprise where they're really interested in improving their relationships and their performance for their customers as people expect more out of their digital experiences. What's the biggest thing that you've you think people get confused by when they think of DevOps? Because I've now seen DevOps start to trickle into the nomenclature of IT, which is private cloud or on-premise data centers. Mm -hmm. And they're all realizing, you know, hey, there's some inefficiencies with our data center, we have a footprint issue, heat, cooling, power and cooling, and, and it's all goodness to get to the cloud. It's not pure cloud, but there'll be a hybrid. Uh, but they all are now using that kind of DevOps <laughs> word. Sure. Uh, DevOps washing, I guess they're do <laughs> doing. <laughs> uh, what, what's your take on that? So I think that the, one of the, the biggest frustrations for, for us coming into a, a, a customer who's interested in sort of DevOps is the, the approach that sort of emerged where DevOps is a replacement for operations. And that's not really what it's meant to be. I mean, the, the whole idea was that your successful projects, your successful products that you're putting in front of your customers are fully integrated and everyone who touches that product over its life cycle, cradle to grave, whether it's development, product management, operations, those folks are focused on efficiencies and performance and all of these good relationships across you know, all these teams. And um, we see too many, I think, folks that have seen the, seen the DevOps but only heard the ops part and have missed out on the actually integrating with dev and, and making those relationships stronger. So let's talk about the ingredients of a good DevOps. If someone's a chef of the future, if you will, no pun intended. <laughs> um, there are ingredients, APIs that are obviously strategic in that mm -hmm. and looking at designing, whether you've got a Hadoop distribution for, for a batch store or you want to run something in the cloud. You really have to kind of put an API mo uh, system on top of it, but you really got to have uh, provisioning and orchestration nailed. Mm -hmm. so can you share with us your perspective of, for the folks out there who are looking at designing you know, multi-dimensional elements in their, in their data center and cloud, which would include, I got big data with Hadoop, I got mm -hmm. a little bit of DynamoDB, I got this over here. Uh, this diversity in technologies mm -hmm. under the API layer, if you will. Sure. And then you got security, you got other things, mm -hmm. but you know, provisioning and orchestration is an interesting phenomenon with virtualization. Absolutely. So could you share, what the, what's the current trend in that area? Uh, so it's definitely parts of the marketplace that are still emerging because everyone sort of has their own idea of what provisioning actually means, what uh, orchestration they actually think they need and what they actually do need. Um, sort of the first run at things, the hardest part is breaking down those silos. Like making services available over APIs is, is a good start towards you know um, starting conversations with teams that haven't really been involved with what we've been calling DevOps, since the DevOps name sort of connotates that's really just dev and operations, but there's security teams, there's networking teams, there's your data center services folks. All of their, their um, processes can be made more efficient with the same principles that we're looking at in provisioning and orchestration, having APIs, having sort of canned um, services that are available so that if folks stick with the, the menu, they <laughs> get things really, really easily. Yeah. And if they want something special, then it has to be a discussion, but yeah. actually facilitating the right way to, to do things. But, it, but that's the challenge. I mean, in, clou in cloud, for instance, SLA is probably the hottest conversation. Mm -hmm. you, you really can't walk into a cloud conversation at any level without 
the conversation of what's your SLA? Mm -hmm. It's a value cloud, commodity cloud. I mean, pick your adjective and FUD that's being kicked around. We had Edgecast on earlier, they're in the CDN mm -hmm. business. I mean, they have no SLAs because if they're not 100% guaranteed uptime, yeah. they don't have customers, yeah. right? So the cloud will soon get there. So orchestration and provisioning, orchestration in particular has been a big topic. Mm -hmm. So automation's critical, right? Mm -hmm. So what is the trends in automation? Because that's a killer product that needs to evolve fast. Mm -hmm. Where would you grade that right now in the market with orchestration and automation? So automation and the, that sort of, sort of the, it's sort of still sort of very much a NAS, nascent uh, product space. Um, at, the, at its core, system automation has been around for a long time, but it hasn't, it hasn't done its best to keep up with the changes in uh, system complexity and uh, system evolution and the speed of those things as they're, they've increased velocity. So um, as far as you know, straight automation goes, I think we have good paradigms. There's still work to be done, there's still um, operating systems that aren't fully supported to the extent that they could be, um, you know, trying to bring more things into the fold. Orchestration is, is still a, a, a horizon to be conquered. It's, it's a place where um, everyone's got very strict requirements on how they want their orchestration to be, and part of the, the success of the next generation of orchestration pieces is going to be partially sort of re-education and resetting expectations and also sort of level setting in uh, the next breed of that technology so that you know we can sort of meet in the middle and, and really move forward. What, on the service provider side, there's a lot of change and everyone you know, obviously realized over the top mm -hmm. services, <laughs> you know, whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, you got Facebook announcing video today, the AT&T guy yeah. working on web app optimis, mobile optimization, obviously, you know, Instagram videos are just going to choke the LTE mm -hmm. network. So, you know, obviously efficiencies are critical, right? Mm -hmm. So, service providers, what are they thinking about right now? Because um, the IT guys are still behind, I think, it's and certainly there's some advanced concepts being pioneered. Well, and that's really with the service providers and the mm -hmm. consumer companies. What are you seeing with those guys in terms of trends that they're watching closely? Um, in, I think everyone's DevOps. sort of paying attention to performance for virtualization and, and how that's continued to evolve to sort of meet the IO requirements of some of these bigger uh, and, and more intense uh, applications. So. Um, to a certain extent, not everything can be virtualized. Um, we see a little bit of that from time to time. Uh, just trying to find the right technologies to fit the needs and then grow those things to, to actually enhance customer expectations. So I got to know if you have any stickers and hugs left. We at own, the booth. We're down to just a couple of stickers. <laughs> We've really run out of swag this week. So it's crazy. Endless hugs, though. Hugs are infinite. So let's so. talk Chef. What's the latest update with Chef? Tell us what's happening. We are continuing to push forward. So we announced uh, Chef 11 at ChefConf in uh, April. We've got lots of things going on there. We have some new features launching later in the year as we continue to uh, help our customers you know, meet their, their internal needs for their uh, configuration management. Uh, our folks are on the road helping folk, everybody else out uh, learning Chef. Um, we're getting uh, new documentation and, and other sort of evolutions in that space. Too. And if people want to follow your Twitter handle is? I am LNXCHK. And tell me about why it says cat video curation services. That is, is a service I provide. Is that a, is that a, <laughs> okay, that's a legit, so you are providing, are you charging, is it a freemium? It's, no, it, no, it's no. It's a free service? It's, it's a free service. <laughs> I, I post the best in cat videos, absolutely. Mandy, great to have you on theCUBE, great conversation. Final question for you is, um, you know, you're, you got your hand on the pulse with Chef. Obviously, it's, in, it's involved, and a lot of developers like using it, and, and the ones that are doing that are on the head of the curve. Puppet's great for the enterprise as well. You guys have a nice, nice competitive relationship, mm -hmm. cooperation, if you want to call it that, all proponents of the same mission. But I want to ask you, what do you see happening around the corner? What are you looking at? What can, if you can peek around the corner the, on the trends or with related to where ops code is, Chef, and this whole market, I mean, it's such a mainstream, us as education involved, but what are you personally looking, looking at and watching and that's around the corner that we should be paying attention to? So I think at, at this point, based on some conversations I've had, not only here at Velocity, but uh, with other folks in the, in the industry, is that if we really want to help the enterprise and some of these more uh, slow, slow to evolve sort of organizations, um, somebody's going to come out with platform as a service 
behind the firewall, single solution for uh, traditional IT to sort of set up um, run-alike sort of systems, like for folks who can't get their stuff onto the internet. And and that's if if I could sell that right now, I'd be I'd be sitting pretty pretty. But um, yeah, and yeah, and the testing the testing and the dev side's good too. Yeah, that's another thing for our community in particular. Testing has been huge. Uh, making sure things are correct. It's all about building trust in your processes, yeah. making sure your workflows do exactly what you need. Mandy here inside theCUBE. This is where all the conversations are happening. All the influencers, CEOs, developers, anyone who has the signal from the noise, that's what we do. This is theCUBE. We're right back with our next guest. Here we extract the signal from the noise, Silicon Angle's theCUBE. We're right back after this short break.